some point guys. So we are here to do a competitive presentation on Commercial Bank of Ceylon PSA and Hare National Bank PSC. Since this is a this is a competitive presentation, we are going to compare both these companies, means Commercial Bank and Hare National Bank. So our group consists with Manek, Vagesh and Hashik Prabha. So these are the contents that we are going to talk throughout this presentation. So first, introduction. In introduction part, we are going to talk about two main sections. Introduction to companies and introduction to the Sri Lankan banking sector. So in focus one, we are going to talk about external analysis. And in focus two, we are going to talk about industry analysis. And focus three, internal analysis. And to sum up all, we, have, we did the SWOT analysis to identify how should we prepare for our future and then conclusion and finally the reference list. So first we will move on to introduction to companies. So let's uh, let's see what commercial bank of Sitlaon PLC is. So commercial bank has experienced 100 years of unrivaled expansion and success with a notable place in Sri Lankan banking sector. They distinguished out for their exceptional customer service and cutting edge technology as well. So their main mission is to be the most, success, most technologically advanced, innovative and customer friendly financial service organization in Sri Lanka poised for future expansion in South Asia. So next we will see what Hatha National Bank PSE is. So it is one of the leading private commercial banks in Sri Lanka with 251 branches located all over the island. So from 2007 to 17, the Asian Banker magazine named the bank as the best, best retail bank in Sri Lanka on 10 separate occasions. So their vision is to be the acknowledged leader and chosen partner in providing financial solutions through inspired people. So this is, this is the basic idea of Commercial Bank of Silver PLC and Hatha National Bank PLC. So next we will move on to introduction to banking sector. So when it comes to Sri Lankan banking sector, it is an oligopolist market and it is controlled and monitored by the Central Bank of CS, C, Central Bank of Sri Lanka, also called as CBSA. So when it comes to Sri Lankan banking industry, it is two types as licensed commercial banks and licensed specialized banks, also called as LCBs and LSPs. So LSPs represent the larger portion of the total assets. And these banks are essential because they help the country's entire economy by providing liquidity and modifying the riskiness of its assets. So this banking industry is currently trading around its 4.2x three-year average per earning ratio. And over the past three years, the earnings of companies in the banking sector have increased by 4.7% annually. So you guys can see it through this diagram as well. So Next, strategic grouping. So we did this, this strategic grouping to identify who are the key players in Sri Lankan banking uh, industry. So you guys can see this horizontal axis represents brand value and this vertical axis represents credit rating. So we took six main banks in Sri Lanka and uh, you guys can see that Hatta National Nation Plus Bank and HNB Bank have uh, low brand value and low credit rating. When it comes to commercial bank, they have high brand value and the same credit rating as HNB. And these three banks, Sampad Bank, People's Bank and BOC have high credit rating and brand values. So, focus one, external analysis. So, to do an external analysis, we conducted the pestle analysis. So, in pestle analysis, in political environment, we identified two driving factors. So, the first one is government system. So, Sri Lanka is a democratic socialist republic and a unitary state with a semi-presidential government that, that combines a presidential and parliamentary form of government. It means that Sri Lanka has a good government system and the risk of price fixing is removed by this system. And everyone has the chance to pursue success and it ensures the income inequality in the community as well. So the second driving factor we identified was political stability. So we all know that uh, in Sri Lanka there is an unstable political condition and it affects negatively for both HNB and commercial bank because the government legislations are subjected to change frequently as there is unstable political condition. So next, economic environment. So in here also we identified three driving factors. So the first one is rate of government of rate of growth of GDP. So the GDP 
in Sri Lanka were 88.93 billion US dollars in 2021. So it creates, uh, uh, it does not create a huge impact on uh, banking sector because there is a normal GDP in Sri Lanka. So the second driving factor we identified was inflation rate. So the inflation rate for the month of March was recorded as 50.3% according to the CBSA. So although there is a good government system in Sri Lanka, they took bad decisions in pa over pa the uh, past three years. So as a result, the inflation rate was increased this high. So it also affects negatively for both HNB and commercial bank because banking operational costs are increased and increased. But compared to HNB, commercial bank has a high turnover. So they can cover those increasing operational costs successfully than HNB. And the next third driving factor we identify was tax rate. So the standard corporate tax rate in Sri Lanka is 30%. And when it comes to HNB, tax paying ability is low as their turnover is lower than the commercial bank. It means that HNB has a uh, turnover around 242.4 billion. And when it comes to commercial bank, they can pay taxes on time as there is a turnover of high turnover of 275.4 billion. So, but it also affects negatively for both companies because their corporate tax rate in Sri Lanka is high and it goes to reduce their uh, profits. So next, sociological environment. So in here also we identified two driving factors. So the first one is population. According to the World Bank in the year 2021, the total population in Sri Lanka was recorded as uh, 22.1 million. So this affects positively for both banks because the because with the increasing population the uh, the demand for money is also increases and it costs to increase in savings account and other types of accounts in both banks so it means that more accounts means they can in increase their profits in banks as well so the second driving factor we identified was increasing urbanization it means that developing rural areas and growing cities so it also affects positively for both banks because it creates possibilities for growth into developing areas and it creates possibilities to provide more banking services and it goes to increase their profits as well. So next, technological NMR. So in here also we have identified two driving factors. So first one is mobile usage. So there are now 2.7 million more mobile connections in Sri Lanka. Therefore, it creates possibilities to in online banking and mobile banking have increased. Uh, it means that money save, uh, it means that operational costs can be reduced, reduced. So it also affects po positively for both banks. So the next driving factor we identified was issues with online security. So when it comes to HNB, security measures are ex expensive and maintaining them are very expensive. Uh, they can't, in HNB, can't maintain their security me measures properly because they have lo low turnover. So they can't invest more money on security measures. So, but when it comes to commercial bank, the security system is very strict and protected. And they maintain it perfectly because they have high turnover than HNB. So they can attract more customers than HNB as well. So the next legal environment. So here the main driving factor we identified was central bank regulation. So when it come to, comes to central bank regulation, the main uh, regulation that they imposed is SRR, also called as statutory reserve ratio. And it is recorded as 44% in the month of March 2023. It means that if I deposit some money on commercial bank, commercial bank have to keep 44% from their deposit in their bank as cash to do their expenses. So this goes to lower the maximum loanable amount of bank funds. It means that uh, uh, they can lend lower amount of loans. It means that their profits will be reduced. So it causes uh, it causes negative effects for both banks. So next, envir environmental environment. So here we also identified two driving factors. So the first one is environmental disasters and unexpected weather. So natural disasters like floods and droughts cause customers to delay or not make payments. So it also caused negatively for both banks because it will affect directly for their profits. 
So the next one is demand for cleaning energy. It means that the location of Sri Lanka is crucial for several types of renewable energy sources. So when it comes to HMB, they are investigating ways to cut energy costs. It means that with the increasing of operate, with the increase of operational costs, they try to uh, uh, investigate some ways to reduce those operational costs with the use of clean energy. So when it comes to commercial bank, they encourage the industry of clean energy investments. So then they can increase their profits by encouraging this uh, clean energy uh, industry. So next I invite Mr. Manik to continue with the presentation. Thank you, Indra. Uh, in here, now we are going to talk about the industry analysis of the uh, industry analysis of our presentation. In here, I am going to uh, talk about the Porter's Hypothesis model. As uh, in Sri Lanka, all uh, banking sectors and oligopoly, these all factors are affected for the uh, both HNB and commercial banks. And in here, there are five factors affected, affect, uh, five factors as threat of new threat of new entrants. Bargaining power of buyers, threat of substitute products, uh, bargaining power of suppliers, and rivalry existing competitors. And first of all, I am going to talk about the competitive rivalry. As this is a uh, competitive analysis, we compare the uh, we compare the both HNB and the commercial banks. As the explanation, the power of a business decreases as the number of competitors and the number of comparable goods and services they are provided increases. On the other hand, when there is a less competitive competition, uh, a corporation, corporation has more negotiation power and can raise prices to boost sales and profits. And it means when there are more competitors available in the market, it is uh, badly affected for the organization. And for the both HNB and commercial banks, uh, the competitive rivalry is very high. As Mindula told before, there are more competitors available in the market as other banks like uh, Sampath Bank, DOC Bank, and DFCC Bank, likewise. And for in here, these HNB Bank adapt to the situation and they use a variety of strategies to minimize the rivalry among competitors. And also, they make every effort, effort to retain their consumers and they strive to provide the finance service possible to every customer. And also, the uh, commercial banks also provide different services to compete in the market successfully. And they attract customers by offering a good service quality. And uh, let's move to the second factor. The second factor is the threat of new entry. As the explanation, an established company's position may be considerably undermined the quicker and cheaper ease for another company to join its market and become an acceptable com competitor. And it means the new company is, if new company is joined to the market, uh, the affection, how it will be affect for their company. Uh, in here, threat of new entry is very low because the whole uh, banking market was caught by the by these giant uh, giant banks as HMB and commercial banks. And uh, oh, for in here, HNB Bank opens seven day banking offices to fulfill the demand which increases the brand quality and the minimize their new entry, new entrance. And also commercial banks open from weekdays from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and commercial banks in are also open 24 hours daily. Now I'm going to talk about the supply power. It means the bargaining power of supplies. In here, the increase by the number of supplies of an item or services primary components, how unique these inputs are and how much it would cost a firm to move to a different source. The few supplies on industry has the more a firm relies on a provider. In the in here the both HNB and the commercial bank have supply power is very low. Because the most functions are outsourced to several organizations. And the both banks, the HNB and commercial banks, they maintain private sector and the government sector entities for network purposes. And when we move to the um, another factor, the bargaining power of buyers, as the explanation, when they influence by the number of customers, the firm has the importance of each client and the expenses of finding new consumers over market for, uh, for its output. 
a smaller number and more strong customer base means that each consumer that greater negotiation power to get cheaper pricing and better deals. In here, the uh, for HMB and the commercial banks, both they have very high uh, bargaining power. Of, they are uh, the bargaining power of the both HMB and commercial banks are very high because many ordinary banks available in the market and there are many buyers and mostly the young customers continually demand prices, comfort and various other things for both these HMB and commercial banks. And when we talk about the threat of substitute products, um, the both companies that manufacture item or provides services for which there are no close equivalent will have more leverage to raise prices and secure favorable conditions. And the customers will have the choice to forego purchasing companies good if close replacement are available. In here, um, the previously there, I told that there are more competitors available in the market. It means that there are more substitute products, more substitute services, and in and therefore the sub, uh, debt of substitute product is very high. And therefore the HMB and commercial banks then will adapt to the situation and they introduce new service service time to service to minimize the effect of substitute products and the commercial bank also always promote service quality to minimize the effect of substitute products and uh, thank you now I invite Vakishar to uh, continue the presentation uh, okay thank you Manet so I'm going to be presenting uh, the internal analysis which is uh, consisting of two parts the resource analysis and the financial analysis so I will be doing the resource analysis. So to do the resource analysis, so we need a, a proper internal analysis technique. So what we do is we do a resource-based view and Porter's valuation analysis and also a Mikkelsen's service model to grab the strategic capabilities that the both the companies have. Then those strategic uh, strategic uh, capabilities will be analyzed to the VIRO uh, technique to identify the sustainable competitive advantage that the companies have. So when we are talking about the Porter's valuation analysis, it focuses about mainly about the uh, consumers rather than the accounting number. So what this does is, this have mainly primary activities and secondary they have supporting services. These two services combine together and then they form profit margin by adding the value to the companies. So then we have the resource based view. In resource based view what we do is we categorize the resources under four main categories and then identify what are the particular categories that those companies have. Then the McKenzie seven is model. This is a very important internal analysis technique which analyzes the soft skills and the hard skills the companies possess in order to gain the competitive advantage. So moving on. Yeah, so this is the resource based view analysis that I told you before. So as I told, there are four main uh, resources, uh, physical resources, human resources, organizational resources and financial resources. So when we are talking about physical resources, we took out the drive of land to analyze and to narrow the uh, impact that we are going to talk. So when we are consider, uh, considering about the land, the HNB has a power of uh, medium power and commercial bank has a high power because uh, HNB bank only has 251 branches but the commercial bank has over 268 branches across the island. So this, uh, in this case the advantage is with the commercial bank. When we are talking about the human resources, we have took out the drive of trained labor. Both the companies are offering internship programs uh, and also training programs for banking associates. So both the companies have a high impact when comparing to the uh, human resources. When uh, talking about the organizational resources, we took out the drive of brand value. So HMB has a low brand value, while commercial bank is uh, has a, uh, commercial bank has a high brand value. I think uh, Mindul also explained in the strategic grouping as well. So when we are talking about the HMB, HMB has only a 120 million dollar valuation in their business, but the commercial bank has 232 million dollar million valuation uh, in their company. Also, when we are talking about the credit rating, HMB uh, has AA plus uh, value and the commercial bank has AAA minus value, which is uh, very favorable for the commercial bank. So, the commercial bank has a high impact while uh, the HMB has a low impact. When we are talking about the financial resources, both the companies are PLC companies, so they have the ability to raise funds at any time by offering 
new share issues or write issues. So though, uh, in that case, uh, the both the components have the same advantage. Let's talk about the quarters valuation analysis. So as I explained, there are two main activities. In the uh, in those activities, the main activities are inbound logistic operations, outbound logistic marketing and sales, and after sales service. So the after sales service is not that much important to the uh, banking sector. That uh, no. I am not saying that this is not important, but with compared to the, these four factors, after sales service is not uh, that much of a factor that impacts these uh, the profits of this HNB and the commercial bank. But when we are talking about marketing and sales, marketing and sales are very important because since this is an oligopoly, uh, oligopolistic market, there are few giant companies. So the customers can shift from company to company without uh, any shifting cost. So this marketing and sales fact is very important. So since these are two PLC companies which is in the same banking sector under the same government, these factors are not that much of a difference between these two uh, organizations. But when we are talking about the infrastructure here, HMB has a medium uh, impact while the commercial bank has a high impact. Because what is, uh, why I am saying that is, uh, as I told, HNB has a low infrastructure facilities with 200 different branches while the commercial bank has 268 branches which is a uh, high amount with compared to HNB so the commercial bank has the, the advantage of the infrastructure with compared to the HNB and uh, this is a McKinsey service model so there are uh, soft skills as well as hard skills when we are com uh, comparing the impact strategy, staff and skills has a high impact on the profits of HNB and commercial bank because when we are talking about strategy, strategy is the main thing that we take decisions in the different situations and also strategy helps the company to remain in the, competi uh, the competition while uh, increasing the profits. Also staff, staff is, uh, when we are considered about, about the staff, it is mainly the labor. It is a uh, productive factor that we don't have control. So we have to focus on staff and motivate them in order to uh, enhance our profits. When we are talking about skills, if we uh, differentiate our skills distinctly from the other bank, then we have the competitive advantage. So uh, threshold capabilities and skills that are, uh, that are not much important, but if the uh, skills are distinctive, then the company can take a high competitive advantage. So, in here, there is a not much big, uh, big difference between the two banks, but what the difference we identified was the structure. The HNB's uh, branch structure is not well uh, organized, while the commercial bank branch structure is well organized. Therefore, the commercial bank has the competitive advantage over uh, HNB when we are talking about the structure. So, as I explained, we, we are doing that uh, RBB value chain and the uh, Porter's value chain and the VKC 7S model to identify the particular strategic capabilities that the companies have, right? So, these are the strategic capabilities that we identified. So, in HNB, they have brand image, uh, branch network and trained labor as their strategic capabilities uh, according to the analysis we did above. So, when we are talking about these uh, three strategic capabilities, they have uh, not uh, able to get all those things organized as I explained before. They have unorganized band, branch network. Due to that, they don't have the capability to organize all these things at once. So they have a competitive advantage, but they haven't turned that competitive advantage into a sustainable competitive advantage by organizing all those factors. Moving on to the commercial bank. Unlike the HNB bank, they have they have uh, organized their financial strengths and gained a sustainable competitive advantage. But uh, why I am uh, why I am saying that was uh, they have a more financial strength than uh, HNB. They have uh, over 270 billion dollar revenue in a uh, one through a one year to, uh, to, uh, 2022. So. That is why they have financial strengths uh, organized, so they have a sustainable competitive advantage over the HNB. Uh, so next, uh, the focus four will be uh, discussed by uh, Ms. Ashitra. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, I'm talking about uh, internal analysis uh, about uh, financial. financial uh, statement 
analysis uh, as a bar analysis highest highest gross income earned in the year 2022 in uh, commercial bank is by the is the com commercial bank and uh, commercial bank earn uh, 8.9 billion rupees uh, greater than the HMU banks in this year, but dividend per share, uh, but dividend per share, share was uh, 0.50 billion rupees greater than the commercial bank, and total equity of the HMU bank in this year was uh, 159.3 billion rupees. And uh, 100, 164.3 billion rupees was earned by the commercial bank. According to this analysis, commercial bank uh, commercial bank earned uh, 735.3 billion rupees greater than the HMB bank, but highest liability is with commercial bank uh, by 730.3 billion differences. Only the uh, numbers in uh, financial report is uh, not enough to analyze the uh, financial uh, position and financial performance. To get the uh, real Insights, a ratio uh, analysis uh, must be done. As according to the uh, ratio analysis, commercial bank uh, has has the highest ratio of uh, zero point one three percent greater than the HMB bank. Uh, it com uh, it means commercial bank has highest as a uh, uh, efficiency than the HMB bank and commercial bank has good uh, management uh, income and uh, expenses because uh, uh, management in the sorry commercial bank has good management in the income and expenses because return on equity uh, ratio of commercial bank is 3.45 percent greater than the HMB bank. Uh, total capital ratio is uh, higher by the commercial bank. Uh, total capital ratio is uh, higher by the uh, HMB bank, uh, and it it is good uh, good for the bank. And the leverage ratio of the HMB bank is higher than the commercial bank by 0.62%. It refers the companies using debit to finance the asset and operations and it is good for the HMB bank. So uh, next we are talking about uh, uh, summary of the sort analysis. Uh, next I invite to Abhisha to continue the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you Ms. Prabha. So we have did an internal analysis, external analysis as well as an industry analysis. So we collected all the information from those analysis and included into one slide, one or two slides here. So in summary we are going to use sort analysis as our summary technique. So moving on, so these are the key content that we extracted from our analysis. So in SWOT analysis there are uh, four main variables, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So when we are talking about strengths of HMB, they have a high number of potential in, uh, investors due to high dividend per share. So as uh, you guys saw in the presentation done by Mr. Hashi they have 50 cent greater high dividend 
in HMB there is a commercial bank so the, motiva- uh, the investors are motivated to invest in the company also they have a low leverage and also they have a strong capital which outperforms the commercial bank PLC when we are talking about the strengths of commercial bank they have a good brand branch network that, uh, as I said before also they have a high turnover of over 270 billion, do- uh, billion rupees in a, within two, uh, 2022 and they have a high uh, brand value of uh, dollar millions uh, 232 also when we are talking about the weaknesses of HNB they have low, low, low turnover, low brand value of uh, dollar millions 120 and unorganized branch network with compared to the commercial bank so when we are talking about weaknesses of commercial bank they have a high leverage and also demotivated of, uh, demotivation of invest, uh, investors due to low dividend per share since both the companies are operating in the same banking industry and the same macro environment they have same opportunities and threats so they have high demand for online banking uh, development of new technology and urbanization as their opportunities and as their threats they have political and economic instability high competition since this is an oligopoly and decreasing of purchasing power of customers due to high inflation so according to my point of view analyzing everything is not that much enough uh, to get uh, the real idea about how the company should perform and where the company should go we should Prepare, prepare for our future as well. That is all about the strategy that we are taking. So, to prepare for future, we are suggesting the Taos matrix to use for the both the banks. So, in Taos matrix, we are considering about how to capitalize on opportunities using strengths. The, both these factors are uh, favorable factors for the organization. So, if the company can capitalize on opportunities using their own strength, then the company can take a good step towards the future. So, the HNB can increase the investment from potential investors and invest more on online banking sector to attract more customers while commercial bank can use organized branch network uh, to attract the uh, urbanized target market. As well as there are two uh, many uh, possibilities here how to handle threat using sales. Threats are unfavorable factor. If we can use our strengths, which is a favorable factor to us, we can control those threats uh, in the future and take the competitive hedge over the other companies. When we are uh, considering this factor, how to mitigate weaknesses from opportunities? Weaknesses is the unfavorable factor. If we use our opportunities to mitigate weaknesses, then the company can achieve the success as well. So, this is the, uh, the strong point that we should discuss. What weaknesses can be used by external threats? This is very crucial because both these factors are uh, unfavorable factors. So, uh, these are the possibilities that the, the, both the companies can uh, face in the future. Low turnover can be further affected by the economic and political instability. And in commercial bank, investors can shift for other businesses in the competition since there is a low dividend per share. So, what uh, I am suggesting for HNB is that HNB can catch the, uh, the urbanized market and the uh, market which is shifting for online banking they can increase their turnover so whether they have some economic instability or not so what we are suggesting for commercial bank is since commercial bank has a high revenue which is over 270 billion rupees they can increase the dividend from here at least by 1 rupee so it uh, converts the uh, competitive advantage to the commercial bank to attract more investors so that that's what we are suggesting so to sum up all these key factors should be analyzed by both the banks in order to turn their competitive advantage into a sustainable competitive advantage that is what the uh, companies can do to survive in this competitive oligopolistic market also according to our point of view both the companies are doing this because the commercial bank was uh, Announced by announced as the best bank in Sri Lanka by Global Finance for 21st time, which is a pretty huge amount. 21st time at its 30th annual award ceremony. In 30th uh, annual award ceremonies, they have won this title 21 times, right? Also, HMB PLC was crowned as the best retail bank in Sri Lanka for the third 13th occasion at the Asia Bank Global Excellency Retail Financial Services Awards. So these companies are currently employing these techniques. That's why they have uh, 
they have taken this amount of awards uh, in the past years so these companies should keep doing what they do and take the sustainable competitive advantage over their rivals in order to enhance their profits and stay ahead of the competition so this is our reference list uh, which sums up our presentation and uh, thank you all i hope you all got a clear understanding about the banking sector of sri lanka as well as these two banks we talk about hnb and commercial thank you all